What's a family secret you didn't get told until you were older that finally made things make sense? Story one, that my mom was born from an affair. My grandma first got pregnant at 16 and then again at 17 with my two aunts. She actually got married about a week after turning 16. Well, when she was 21, she had an affair with a really rich dude and thus my mom was conceived. It was always weird to me that my aunts were tall, blonde, and quite sensible. Meanwhile, my mom is short, brunette, and crazy. My grandma ended up getting a divorce about a year later because of this. Also, the rich guy was also married and had a child with his equally crazy wife. So I have an aunt Stevie no one told me about. Kind of related, but after my grandma got the divorce and my mom was like seven, the rich guy's wife burst through the front window demanding that she buy my mom off my grandma. Like, she went through a sheet of glass. It explains why I'm so different from my aunts and supposed grandpa. Story two, that my sister, she was 16 when I was born and kicked out, is my mother. Her mother, my grandma, raised me as her daughter. It doesn't end there. I was a product of abuse from a family friend. To this day, I don't know who my real dad is. My grandma was in her 40s when she had me, and my sister was sent to a boarding school when she was pregnant with me. My sister has no idea that I know. Story 3. Something felt strange about my grandfather's funeral, just the way they were emphasizing his place in heaven. Later found out that he shot himself in the heart with a three fifty seven. The same side of the family also had seemingly random people show up at family gatherings throughout my life that ended up being illegitimate children of my grandma. I just started gaining uncles and cousins. Confused the hell out of me as a child. Story 4. One of my most beloved mom's recipe recipes was actually Hamburger Helper. She was a from-scratch cook and literally everything else we ate she made herself. She never told us because it made her so mad that her kids would love a boxed meal so much. She did it once out of sheer desperation because she didn't have time to cook one night. We ended up loving it. I only found out in college because I begged for the recipe. I love giving her crap for it to this day. Story 5. That my grandparents didn't talk to each other for over 20 years before my grandfather finally kicked the bucket. They lived in the same house the entire time too, and no one knows why they weren't on speaking terms. Story 6. My mom was in the hospital, so I flew home. Me and my dad were hanging out and getting drunk, and he started telling me family secrets, almost like he was trying to get a reaction out of me. An uncle was molested. An estranged aunt might actually have a different father than we thought, etc. The one that really got me was when he revealed that he used to do coke. I was imagining that he meant in his 20s. I said, when did you stop? And he said, I think you were about 19? Like, freaking what, man? My entire childhood? And he said, yep. Did mom know? Yes. How much? About a gram a week? At first, it was completely insane to me. But looking back, it made a ton of stuff make way more sense. Crazy mood swings, explosive fights. One minute he would be fine, and then suddenly he would be raving about something. I knew he drank, so I always blamed the instability in the house on that. But finding out he was regularly doing c all my life was both astounding, and it made complete sense. Story 7. My dad never called his stepmom anything but her real name, Margaret. He has seven brothers and sisters, and they all called her mom or some form of that. When I got older, it turned out my grandpa was actually cheating on my real grandma slash my dad's mom with Margaret while she was dying of colon cancer. My dad was five when she died, and as she was dying, my dad had to call my grandpa to tell him to come home because she was dying. After that, Margaret and her three kids moved in, and my dad was forced to live with his sister, who was 18 and married. This was late 70s backcountry, so not abnormal for the time. From then until he turned 16, when he decided to move in with his best friend and his mom. So I learned that he probably has always had resentment towards Margaret because of everything that happened when he was so young, and never wanted to call her anything that resembled a mother because that's not what she was to him. Story 8. I didn't know one of my cousins existed until I was about 10 years old. Turns out he was diagnosed with leukemia as a child, and I was a very sensitive kid, so my family decided not to tell me until the treatment was successful and he recovered. It would have been okay if they told me as soon as he was healthy again, but I guess they forgot. So the first time I met him, I was wondering how exactly I managed to forget the existence of a whole person. Story 9. Dad and his brother hate each other. His dad, my grandfather, was dying. He needed a kidney. Dad was a match and didn't donate. Once he passed, the mess kicked off for real. I always thought it was due to my dad not giving the kidney. 
My dad drank slash drinks a lot. It would affect him greatly to give up a kidney. There were many accusations about his drinking and being selfish. After the funeral, we were asked to come to take a lot of his belongings, and his brother showed up and made a big scene. I broke it up and went to talk to my uncle. I was like, what the f***, and didn't make progress. Keep in mind that I'm like 30 plus in the middle of this. Last year, it all became 100% clear. My uncle likes to play the victim, but was a piece of crap trying to cover his ass. My uncle has been married six times. He lied to his wife about how many marriages he had. He is a serial cheater. During the numerous hospital stays of my grandfather, my uncle would travel to be with his dad. But in reality, he was out screwing everything that moved, namely a nurse looking after my grandfather. At this time, he is married to his wife's six. She thinks she's third and has his first child who is about 10. Uncle had always been this guy, but it blew up when my dad was hanging out with his bro and his brother's business partner. Dad got drunk and laid all his brother's dirty laundry out to the business partner. All of it. Every detail. The business partner jokingly made comments about it in proximity to the current wife. This obviously caused tension. The tension eventually had the partners separate. Uncle went nuclear on dad about it. Dad told him one, if he was that upset about it, why does he keep doing it? And two, back the hell off unless he wants him to lay all his crap out to the current wife. So all this time, all this hate due to my uncle trying to keep his secret and masking it as my dad being a piece of crap alcoholic or wanting to stop drinking and save his dad's life. Story 10. Grandpa is a p with a track record in my family, and that's why I never got left alone with him. Unfortunately, my cousins did, and the expected happened. And then the unexpected, after 40-some years, he finally got reported and is now rotting in country jail. Story 11. My grandpa burned to death. I found out he died when I was a kid but was not allowed to go to his funeral, and they told me he had a heart attack. I was so confused because everyone around me would clam up when I asked about him. Turns out that he had a heart attack while trying to put out a field fire collapsed, and burned. I still have no idea how long it took for people to find him, but I'm assuming it was hours. Story 12. From my father's family line. My great-grandfather killed my great-grandmother with an axe while she was sleeping. My grandma, who was the oldest one, raised all of her siblings. She was 19 at the time and just married my granddad, who was 19 too. My youngest sister was just two years old. They were nine in total. I knew my grandma raised all her siblings, but I always thought it was because her mother died from some illness. I just found out when I was 17 and asked my aunt. Grandma is a real hero indeed. She always tells stories of how she managed to feed so many people. They were really poor back in those ages. First of all, mandatory, English is not my first language. Sorry for any grammar mistakes. It's crazy and sad at the same time how many people have similar stories. But why did he care? Did he go to prison? He was an alcoholic, came home drunk one night, and had the idea that she was cheating on him. She wasn't. Actually, he was the one who was having an affair and even had a kid with another woman. I never met them. He went to prison, got cancer, and died. Nobody wanted to claim the corpse and give him a funeral. I suspect he had some mental illness, but he was never diagnosed. This was in the 50s and we're from Uruguay. Mental illness was taboo back in those days. My father was born 10 years after that, and my aunt, the one who told me the story, was born 25 years after that. Story 13. My aunt and uncle, who passed away when I was 11, were drug addicts. I adored them, but as I got older, I started seeing less and less of them and never understood why. My parents briefly told me when I was 16 that my uncle didn't die of a brain tumor. I actually had one, though. But instead, he shot himself while my aunt was in the other room which led to my aunt's related death on New Year's Day. They finally told me the whole story when I was 21. I was the last person to know. Even my little brother knew before me, because I was extremely close to them and looked so highly at them. I still do. I wish I would have known sooner, but I understand why they didn't tell me. Story 14. My grandmother was a hard drug addict. She was a nurse and basically nurse jackied her way into stealing Dilaudid, hydromorphone, from the hospital and shooting it up for a decade or so. I still don't know the real specifics, but this was happening when I was roughly 1 to 10 years old, and I was told about it when I was in my mid-20s. She was never noticeably out of it, but I remember her being super chill every time she watched us, and rarely ever drove us anywhere. Now I understand that she was just stoned sideways and wasn't going to risk driving us kids around while she was under the influence. 
Another odd thing, when she was stoned, she would always eat ice chips. She's sober now and doesn't anymore, but I remember her chomping on ice cubes all day long when we were little. I was younger than 10 when this all went down. She was not shooting narcotics for years. She was using pain pills, Demerol, for years. One to six months after she switched to injecting Dilaudid slash Demerol, she was noticed at the hospital and tested on the spot. Her license was revoked, but she went through the rehabilitation programs and got her license back and continued to work as a nurse until she retired. Mom said that she had always chomped ice because she is anemic and because of pica, though plenty of people have suggested that opiates and ice chomping run hand in hand. Mom tells me that Grandma isn't the same woman she once was. She used to have confidence in her aura that followed her into every room. She demanded respect and fought hard for things she believed in. Her strong will is no longer a part of her, almost as if the shame and ridicule of her character have snuffed out the flame she once had. I always have and always will love her unconditionally. She is our matriarch. Story 15. That my grandmother's husband was a pedophile. All of a sudden, I knew why my uncle was so weird and would pick me up and carry me away rather than let me stay alone in a room with him. For the longest time, I thought my uncle was a real prude. My male cousins could all swim naked or run around in just their swim trunks, but my uncle made me always wear a swimsuit and put on a cover-up when I came out of the pool. He later admitted, if God forbid he touched you, I was making sure no one could try to blame you. They blamed all his other victims for being too tempting. My uncle, bless his heart, wanted to kill that man so badly. For that matter, so did my dad. Finding out the pedo was, well, a pedo, made all of their muttering to each other at family gatherings make so much more sense. Story 16. My father always talked about how his brother lied to a doctor so he could get on disability. I thought it was so easy for anyone to get a disability check. All you had to do was tell your doctor you were abducted by aliens. Years later, my father had a mental breakdown. He started telling stories about the government implanting a chip in his brain. He went out and got a computerized tomography scan as proof, and he would point to things that weren't true. My dad was diagnosed as a schizophrenic, and years later, he started collecting a disability check because he couldn't hold a job. Kind of hard to perform any job when every conversation, including interviews, veers into the government trying to screw me in the ass. As an adult, it dawned on me when my aunt mentioned mental illness runs in the family. My uncle had never lied to his doctor. He told that doctor what he believed to be the absolute truth. He had been abducted by aliens. Story 17. I have an uncle who was a hardcore alcoholic and lived with my grandparents until they passed. We always thought he was just a non-motivated loser. I have another uncle that passed away well before I was born. Got hit by a car coming back from the store, getting something from my grandparents. After both grandparents passed, my mom told me that the alcoholic uncle was asked to go to the store, but bribed his little brother to go instead, which led to his death. My grandmother, who I always held in very, very high regard, told my alcoholic uncle afterward that his brother would still be alive and well if he had gone to the store as she asked. I cannot imagine the guilt that would have laid on him, and completely understand why he ended up that way as a result. In my adult life, I've found my uncle is actually a pretty good man just dealt a crazy hand. Story 18. That a huge number of relatives on my dad's side have killed themselves. My brother, grandfather, four cousins, one uncle, and five great uncles. And of those remaining, most have schizophrenia. There are usually only one or two people per generation that don't kill themselves or need medication or need to be put away. This was a big unspoken family secret. Both my mom and I had no idea until my brother killed himself. All of the people that have killed themselves in the last few generations have been male. Almost all of them, with only two or three exceptions, were between 16 to 19 years old. Some of the girls in my family have attempted suicide but haven't succeeded, including myself, but that was 16 years ago and I'm doing fine now. Of my siblings, my oldest sister was diagnosed with bipolar, my second oldest sister is completely fine and well-adjusted. It confuses everyone. My brother killed himself, and I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. But between medication and therapy, I live my life 100% normal. I don't try to hide it, but most of the people I know don't know I have any sort of mental illness. In regards to having children, my husband and I decided to not have children. But that has very little to do with my family's medical history of mental illness or my family's medical history of heart disease and strokes. It was our personal decision. Both of my sisters have children, and not a single one of them has killed themselves or even tried. 
After my brother died, we put a lot of effort into making sure that everyone in my family understands that going to a psychiatrist is just like going to a family doctor or heart doctor, and that it's stupid to not take care of all of your health. Obviously, it's not 100% perfect. My oldest nephew has substance abuse problems, but it's nowhere near the chaos that it was in my family when mental illness was treated as some sort of shameful family curse. Story 19. Not all that extreme, but it was emotional for me. My grandfather was the typical tough, rugged mountain man. He never expressed emotion and, in fact, rarely ever even spoke at family gatherings. He would just sit in the corner drinking beer. I never felt that he and I had a very good relationship, considering I was the weird, artsy kid in the family. We didn't have much to talk about because we couldn't relate to each other well. He died of lung cancer two years ago. A couple of months after he died, I was visiting my parents, and my mom pulled out a shoebox that belonged to him filled with sentimental photographs that he kept hidden in his closet. Nobody knew about it until after he died and they were cleaning his things out. Almost every single photograph was of me. It broke my heart. I wish I would have been closer to him. He clearly loved me a lot more than I thought he did. Story 20. My sister and I both got UTIs at the same time when our family was staying at our grandparents' house. One day, my grandma took both of us aside and started what felt like an interrogation about whether any adults had touched us. Like, if something happened, you have to tell me right now. At the time, I felt gross, confused, and guilty, even though nothing had happened. It was just too intense. I later learned that my grandma had been sexually abused by her brother for years, and her mother refused to believe her. Story 21. My grandma remarried when my mom was a toddler. Turns out that Biodad was cheating on Grandma with her best friend, resulting in a child and a divorce. He recently passed away after having no contact with us since he left his grandma. Turns out our family was his secret family that his current family never knew about. He also mentioned that it's very likely my mom has a couple of dozen half-siblings in Vietnam. Also, he left all his money to his favorite prostitute in his will. While in Vietnam, it was common for soldiers to rape many women. He did this in several villages and farms. None of it was consensual. While the prostitute did get the money in the will, it was hardly anything. He was in a lot of medical debt and didn't have much. His other family did take it to court to contest the will, though. I'm not sure how it ended because my mother made it clear that she didn't want a penny from him. His daughter, my mom's half-sister, had no idea that he had another family before having her. She only found out as he confessed it when he was near death. She got in touch with us, but my mother, perhaps rudely, but what she felt she had to do, made it clear that she wanted nothing to do with them. Story 22. My grandfather did not die of a heart attack in the garage. My grandmother accidentally hit him with the car. I never knew why my grandmother refused to drive anywhere and preferred walking. What happened was, she was in the driveway trying to back out, and he was standing in front of the car guiding her. She thought she was in reverse, she was looking back pressed the gas, and the car went forward and pinned my grandfather against the garage door. He died later that day at the hospital. I was six at the time, and I still remember her sobbing uncontrollably at his wake, almost screaming. She kept calling out to him. She had to be removed from the room. They had been married 52 years. She never drove after that. She would walk miles to the grocery store. She borrowed a shopping cart and would bring that back and forth. She never spoke about how he died but spoke about him all the time. She would always tell me stories and ask me about my memories of him so that I wouldn't forget them. She would tell people he died of a heart attack, which is where I got that story from. I think that was a kind of coping mechanism so that she wouldn't have to deal with the truth. She lived another 23 years with that guilt. She was a strong lady. Many years later, I overheard my dad telling someone that his father had died in a car accident. I interjected and said, he died of a heart attack in a car. That's not a car accident. I was then let in on the family secret. Story 23. My father was a capo from the Neapolitan Camorra, was wanted by the Interpol, and couldn't set foot back in Italy without being immediately apprehended. He was also living under a stolen identity he used when he fled a high-security prison in Italy. My last name never was my family name. That and much more. I used to like telling this story when I found out, since everyone thought I was lying or joking anyway. I was 12 and only found out because my mom broke down after my father was detained in Spain while we lived in Argentina, which meant he might never come back to us. He escaped prison again a year later. Story 24. Last year, I found out my dad isn't actually my biological father. 
He got my sister and me those Ancestry DNA kits for Christmas, to do for fun as a family. And once we got the results, it showed he wasn't my biological father. The screwed up thing is my mom knew the whole time and never told anyone. For 26 years, she kept this a secret and never had any intention of telling the truth. When I confronted her about it, she denied and denied, and then once I showed her the results, she finally confessed. She'd had an affair with her college boyfriend while my dad was on a business trip for a couple of months. After I found all of this out, things finally started making sense. She and I never had a great relationship. I always envied other girls growing up that had great mother-daughter relationships and never understood why that couldn't be me. She was very verbally and sometimes physically abusive towards me growing up, but never towards my sisters. She knew I was the product of her affair, and she was ashamed so she would take it out on me. I was always told I was six weeks premature, but now I know she was lying so she could keep her timeline straight so my dad wouldn't find out about the affair. She had another affair with my soccer coach when I was 10, which led to my parents' divorce later that year, and blamed me for it. All of her wrongdoings, she would blame me for, and now it all makes sense. She's a really messed up woman. I'm not on speaking terms with her anymore, nor do I really care to meet my biological father. Maybe someday, but I'm not ready to. My relationship with my dad has never been better, and that's all I really care about. Story 25. My pet rabbit got attacked by something a couple of years after I got it. My parents found it dead and replaced it before I found out. I just thought my rabbit lived super long, but it was actually two rabbits. This happened over 10 years ago, and I found out last year. 